by the grace of our Lord. We are reading from Peter first, uh, chapter 2 and verse 6 from in the New Testament. Peter first, chapter 2 and verse 6. For in Scripture it says, Say, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God so that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives amongst the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men whether to the king as to the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Live as free men but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. So proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers, free God, honor the king, I mean. As this letter continues, Apostle Peter speaks to those, the Israelites, as his mission was to serve the Israelites that were circumcised, but not all of them. He is speaking to the ones that have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father. Those that God foreknown that will be from the ones loving God. And even though that there are many that have been invited, few that are chosen, these are the people that actually keep the word of the, lo the Lord, and thus it's revealed via that way that they love God. And they are the people that God foreknown that they will become the imitators of the image of Christ, so that Christ can be the firstborn am amongst many brothers. And those that have been predestined have been invited. And those that are invited have been uh, sanctified because they believed that, God, that Christ died for our sins. And at the end they are glorified as he has promised them an inheritance that can, is not withered and is kept for them upon eternity. And he t telling, he's telling this to the people that are keeping the faith waiting for the salvation that is ready to be revealed on the last days. And to these people, the, Lord, the word of the Lord says, you that come to the Lord as a living stone, a living stone that people rejected, but God has chosen, you as well as you need to, to um, do accordingly by offering speech or sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, the living stone that God is mentioning is what we see in the letter to the Corinthians by Paul, as he says that me, by the grace of the Lord, has been given to me as a wise architect. I place the, the rock, but someone else is rather building on that rock. But it's and every one of us needs to see how he is building because no one is able to lay a different foundation than what God has built. That is why it is written in the prophetic word of the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament, that I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Zion, that is actually the church of the Lord, 
the house of the living God if and only if that church is the pillar and the foundation of truth. And to this church, therefore, God has placed a stone upon which the church is going to be built and is a chosen and precious one. And it's a trustworthy stone, cornerstone, so that each and every person that is trusting upon the Lord will not be put to shame. Now, to you who believe this stone is precious, you who believe in that chosen and precious cornerstone that has been uh, rejected by man, but chosen by God. And uh, these words apply to only the people that believe. What does it mean for me to believe? A very nice saying, let's say, as the word of the Lord says, that by grace you are saved through faith, and this is the gift of God. That it means that God, He invited those that He foreknown, as the word of the Lord says that I love you with eternal love, I invited you with mercy, and I've revealed to you that my word has become flesh. It has become a person. And he has been born from the Spirit and Mary. And he has walked among people for three and a half years, full of the Spirit and full of truth. And this very word has become a flesh. My only begotten Son, that has become a servant, this is the precious cornerstone that I have laid in my church, that is my house, a cornerstone I have placed it, and there are those that believe in it and they can never be put to shame, and there are those that do not believe in that cornerstone, that are afflicted because of the disrespect and uh, disbelief amongst the darkness that is in the world because they never ab were able to know what light is. And because God is light, there's no darkness in Him. And he who is uh, walking in the light, then he loves God, and God loves him. God has invited that person. God has given him faith so that he can believe in Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, who is the Son of God. And for his faith to become active, God says that now that I have re that now that you're reborn, you have to be baptized in the water in the name of Father, the Son, and the Spirit, leaving away your sinful spirit. And this is not just a typical way of doing things, but rather is a meaningful mystery and worship of God, because through baptizing, the person is dressing off the body of the sins through Christ who is making in him the spiritual circumcision, and he's adding that person to the church. He is adding his name to the book of life, and to that person, God the Father, the, to the person that is dressed off sin, is dressing on Christ. As it is written in the word of the Lord, that he who is baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, then this person is dressing on Christ. And at every single day, Christ was adding to the church the believers that is the house of the living God. That is why, to you who believe it, this stone is precious, and they are part of the body of Christ. Parts of the church of Christ, who is the glory of Christ at the end. But to those who do not believe, that are not able to believe that Christ is a chosen and precious cornerstone and they do not believe because they do not want to. And it is very nicely written in the uh, Gospel according to John when Christ is speaking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees who are hypocrites with a wicked heart, with a boastful spirit and full in, g given full to the desires of the flesh. He says to them that you are studying the Bible because you think that you have life in them but you have not yet understood that those scriptures are the ones speaking about my coming and he says also but you will not do you you do not want to come to me so that you can have eternal life it's not that you cannot it's not an issue of me being able to believe the issue is do you want to 
then Christ is going to fill and pour down from his spirit of grace, that is a spirit of wisdom and understanding, so that you may be able to understand and know what Christ is con uh, commanding you, and also a spirit of uh, wanting and a spirit of power so that you may be able to, and a spirit of respect so that you may be able to fear God, and a spirit of understanding so that you may be able to receive uh, and understand what the word of the Lord says and the sp spirit of fear of God so that you may walk according to faith and not by sight and with the fear of God in the direction of the spirit for you to be able to proceed to those that do not believe the uh, stone that is precious as a co and chosen because they have rejected that cornerstone it has become to them a capstone and a rock that makes them fall. Those that believe I will not be will not be put to shame, but those that do not, they are going to stumble on that rock. They are gonna stumble and fall because they are not believing. And the word says that th But this was the case, they were destined for it because they did not want to obey. Because only those that have accepted and believed that Christ is the Son of God, then God has given only to those people the ability to become the sons of God. The people that believe that through faith, that the person that God sent down to earth, and that, this Christ, this, uh, that Christ was adding these people to the church, through those things there was a new... Uh, nation created as in the Old Testament there was a nation created called Israel that means uh, victorious and triumphant in Christ through Abraham the man of faith uh, and those that have been circumcised were part of the people of Israel but those that were born from flesh they were carnal and they uh, disobeyed the Lord and when they en when Christ entered uh, on top of a donkey inside Jerusalem they did not accept him they did not recognize the day of their salvation and that is why Jerusalem and the Israelites were uh, completely destroyed from uh, the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem uh, after 27 years from that day, uh, the J Jerusalem rather was destroyed. As they were calling out and crying out, crucify them, and Pilate washed his hand and said that his blood is on you, and they dared to say that his blood of this innocent person on us and on our children. And indeed, this is what happened. 70 after AC, uh, Romans destroyed completely Jerusalem they destroyed the temple of Solomon and it is up until this day destroyed and Jerusalem is uh, stumbled and uh, by nations and after the and in 1948 as the Israelites have had tasted what they said that the blood on us and on our children uh, the Nazis came on and the Holocaust and the that applied for the children and th from there on we begin moving forward to the days uh, that the Bible describes as the coming of Christ will not take longer than this generation comes to end but a person has called upon the name of the Lord now as we read in Peter first and Christ as add was adding people to the church these people as they believe, they are enjoying the reward that Christ is giving. And these people, as Apostle Peter says, are a holy now nation, a royal priesthood, chosen people. But uh, we have to stress out that this, first of all, God said to the people of Israel, the fifteenth, the fiftieth day that they went out of Egypt, when God called Abraham and uh, Moses, and He said to him that now call the people of Israel. 
and um, reading from uh, the chapter 19 from Exodus chapter 19 and ch verse 5 and now if you truly obey to my word says Christ says God and you keep my commandments says God then you will be my chosen people my chosen nation because my the land is mine and then you will be a royal priesthood and a holy nation these are the words that you're gonna say to the people of Israel uh, says, says God to Moses that you're gonna be the chosen people you're gonna be a royal priesthood and a holy nation and the one circumstance circumstance that is for you to follow my voice and keep the commandment that I have obey, uh, commanded you to follow something that did not happen and it, that didn't happen at that day on the day that Christ came in Jerusalem and he was rejected as well but he was also crucified he was given to the nations and the nations killed him and the one without a sin died as an Israelite, Jesus Christ, which means Savior, Emmanuel, that means sent Son of God, and God is with us. And he was killed, but he died uh, by his own will. He was able to get away from uh, death because he never stopped being God. He, the human Christ died. The Word of God did not die. But as the Lamb of God died for our sins, and Christ was able to resurrect him for our justification, and he who is able to accept Christ, believing in his heart that God resurrected Christ, the Nazarene, for our justification, and he testifies that he is the one who has been given the uh, holiest name, a name that every knee will bow down to, and every tongue will shall testify that he is the Lord of Lords. And every person that believes all of that, and he testifies that, that, that Christ is the Lord of Lords and uh, King of Kings, he is saved and God is adding to the church. And that is how the church of the Lord is created. A church that is enjoying now the promises that God has also given to the Israelites. And they, the Israelites did not... Uh, enjoy those promises because they did not obey and up until now there is a small remnant and of course the nations now also know the word of the Lord and now all those people are chosen they are born by God reborn by Christ through the word of the Lord and the Spirit chosen people they are also a royal priesthood and as the word of the Lord says in for example Revelation Christ says to John the beginning in the first chapter of Revelation to the one that loved us and cleanses us clean from our sins with his blood and he he was the one that made us a royal priesthood to his to his father God to him almighty exal exaltation is due to him therefore that loved us and cleansed us with his blood and he has made us priests and kings in front of his father a royal priesthood and we're gonna come back to it holy nation we're not just a nation and a nation can be uh, confirmed by the borders uh, it has and the tongue and the language that that nation is speaking, the people are speaking and we have one uh, tongue and one uh, language and that is the language of the Spirit and the Word of the Lord. Now in this earth we are uh, we are visitors we are aliens our, our country is not here but is on heavens but here we are royal priesthood and we are a nation that God has taken and purchased through Christ so that we may testify the good deeds of the one who then glorify God on the day that he visits us of course we can read from Romans as Apostle Paul says 
that through Christ we have received mercy and a mission to obey to the faith and to testify his name on all nations and we have received the commandment to testify Christ and him crucified to all nations therefore we are a nation and it is very important for us to know this that God has taken us and purchased us so that we may testify the deeds of God that has invited us from the darkness into his light as we said before that God is light and there's no darkness in him but there's also darkness and the master of darkness is Satan but God is our father and every uh, power is due to him and he invites us from the darkness of this world to his m wonderful light who people that were not a people but now we are the people of God we used to be pagans we would worship on other gods we would worship idols before God we were never the nation that God has uh, was talking about the only holy nation was the people of Israel according to God but we have been invited and once we you were not a people but now you are the people of God once you have not received mercy but now you have received mercy and what does it mean to receive mercy God blessed us according to his multiple mercy according to his mercy and that means that even though we do not deserve the mercy of God God was able to give us mercy and grace of the Lord means that even though that we do not uh, w are not worthy of the grace of the Lord through our faith God has given us he from his grace but what I want us to look into deeply is royal priesthood and what we read from in Revelation that God has made us uh, kings and priests of his name Th that means that each and every one of us through Christ are kings to God and priests to God and the question is what is the characteristic of a king and how is God acting to the king and king to uh, the king to God what is that special uh, relation because God is the king of the people of God king of kings is Christ the son of God and king of all kings is the almighty God the one who lives upon eternity but the king of kings has made us kings as well through Christ for himself who is the person that now is a king and remains? What is the characteristic of a king? He uh, saved me, but I remain as a king. I still am. The characteristic of a king is what at the beginning uh, God said for David, saying that I found David, my servant, the son of Jesse, who is a man according to the heart of the Lord and he will do according to my commandments what is the characteristic of a king therefore it's the truth and Apostle John in his third letter says that beloved one I hope that you are blessed and doing well as your soul is because I was rejoiced in hearing your, uh, my brother speaking about you and about your truth that you have the truth but you're also walking according to the truth and that is the characteristic of a king but I have no greater joy than my children walking according to the truth there's a nice psalm uh, 29 psalm 29 that is talking about the crucifixion and the death of Christ but there's also another psalm which is also nice that is confirming how God is acting uh, to his king to someone who God is accepting as a king 
who has the characteristics and this is uh, Psalm 21 Psalm 21 let us read it together so that we can see one what are the characteristics of a king and we said before that he has the truth and he's also uh, walking according to the truth he is studying the word of the Lord and he's remaining on it and that is why his fruit is for his uh, blessings his king as a king he has eternal life and how is God acting to such a king and I'm reading from Psalm 21 so that we can see and rejoice because of the word of the Lord because we do hope that as the Lord has given us rebirth because we believed in the resurrection of Christ and Christ has added us to his church and Christ has made us king and priests to God and as he did we are and still remain such in such way we are so because we have the truth we believe in that truth we are enjoying the truth through the word of the Lord saying that you need to study and remain on those and your advancement will be clear to all people and then the Lord is going to exalt you and lift you up in all people you see if you take every attention as a king you are and you be aware of not boasting sin and being uh, bring that being down in justice you're going to be able to save yourself and the ones who hear you let us now see how the Lord is acting according to his king and I'm reading from Psalm 21 O Lord verse 1 the king rejoices in your strength how great is his joy in the victories you give the first characteristics that God is giving to the life of a king who is a king to God that Christ has made as he saved that person is he is enjoying uh, the rejoicing in your strength in the strength of the Lord and he uh, is able to see victories that God is giving you have granted him the desire of his heart and now we see what the Lord is giving to the life of a king and you have gr granted him the desire of his heart and have not with withheld the request of his lips therefore the king is not uh, saying no he's always providing grace and an answer to the king that he has in front of him because you welcomed him with rich blessings you are able to go before him and you are able to bless him because you are uh, a blessing God and placed a crown of pure gold on his head you have placed a crown of pure gold on his head and this is the person that God has selected as a king in front of him he asked you for life and you gave it to him length of days forever and ever this is the main characteristic that the kings of God is giving eternal life and notice that through the victories you gave his glory is great you have bestowed on him splendor and majesty as we read in uh, the letter to of Peter that to you that believe on uh, his worth and the word of the Lord says a splendor and majesty has been given to that person surely you have granted him eternal blessing and have made him glad with the joy of your presence and we read now in uh, verse 7 the second characteristic actually of the king that makes someone a king of almighty is for the king trusts in the Lord through the unfailing love of most of the most high he will not be shaken therefore who is the king is the person that has the truth studies and remains on it the one who remains on that truth who is working on that truth and thirdly is that he is hoping always and only to the Lord is he gonna have war of course Johan will lay hold on all your enemies says because there are many kings other kings the difficult ones let's say in chapter 8 in verse 8 we say we see Johan will lay hold on all your enemies your right hand will seize your foes 
therefore the one who's guarding that king is God at the time of your appearing you will make them like a fiery furnace in his war wrath the Lord will sw swallow them up and his fire will consume them absolutely protecting not just blessing but also protecting the king in uh, verse 10 you will destroy the descendants from the earth their prosperity from mankind because the enemy uh, of their souls are trying as the word of the Lord says they're trying to uh, be wicked uh, against the people of the Lord it says saying that through the plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes they cannot succeed For you will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with a drawn bow. And continues on to say that, Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sink and praise your might. Therefore, the first characteristic of the people of the Lord is that they are the people of the Almighty. And I repeat, who is a king? Is the person that has the truth, and the truth remains on him. And he hopes upon the Lord, always. And then the Lord is for, for that person, as a blessing God, he is blessing him, and as a multiplying God, he is multiplying that person, and he is also uh, guarding that person because of his righteous name. And he is making that person able to be triumphant through Christ, as he is a fragrance of God, of Christ to God. But we are also priests of the Lord. And what is the characteristic of the priests now? In the Old Testament, the priest had one uh, mission that was to provide sacrifices to the Lord for the people of Israel the characteristic therefore of the priests in the New Testament is one and I read it from the uh, third letter of John uh, chapter f uh, verse 5 saying that dear you having you do having you're doing good that and the word of the Lord says through John that the Lord is not uh, able to forget your work as you continue on serving your brothers but at the end he says that come to me m the beloved of my father inherit the kingdom that I have prepared from you from the beginning of the uh, world because I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was an alien and you came to my visit. I was in prison and you visited me. And those on the right asked. The lambs of God asked. When did we see you that way? Uh, thirsty, hungry, an alien or in prison and we came to you. And God replies that since you have done this, to one of the least of my brothers, you have done so to me. Therefore, what is the characteristic of the priests of the Lord? And they are becoming priests through the rebirth. They are becoming king and priests of the Lord. But they also keep um, the characteristic as a king. But also, they also keep uh, as a king the characteristics of a king with the love that is pr uh, spread out to, her ha to their hearts. Therefore they are people that are pr praying with the Spirit. God is pouring out from His love to them. And then God is making them uh, priests that are perfect, able to give and provide sacrifices to God for, they peop for the people and we are talking about spiritual sac sacrifices and I repeat again from uh, the third letter of John in uh, verse 5 dear friend you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers even though they are strangers to you they have told the church about your love you would do well to send them on their way in a manner worthy of God it was for the sake of the name that they went out receiving no helps no help from the pagans 
We ought therefore to show hospitality to such men, so that we may work together for the truth. Therefore, what is the characteristic of the kings is the truth. What is the characteristic of the priests that remain priests is the love that is uh, enhanced and advancing because as they are baptized by the Spirit, the love of God is pouring out in their hearts more and more so that they can uh, serve their brothers so and also to provide uh, spiritual sacrifices to the Lord for their brothers. And what are those sacrifices that we are talking about in the New Testament? First of all, uh, praying and crying out and, pr and pleading and exalting for all the brothers to God, for the kings and those in authority, because they are willing and we want to live a peaceful life. Therefore, from who are we supposed to expect a peaceful life and we are able to live a peaceful life? As the word of the Lord says, the answer is from the priests that remain priests because the love of God is pouring out in their hearts and they can pray with love and that means that their prayer has results and fruit and it has results indeed because it's done with much love and truth because at the same time they still are kings and in that way with the prayer for all people and for all the ones that are in authority all the church and the people of God and all peoples are uh, rejoicing in a peaceful life in front of the eyes of God. Also, a spiritual sacrifice is to present our bodies as a living sacrifice worthy to God. How uh, the priests were exalting God? By slaying lambs and by providing sacrifices to God. How are the priests of the New Testament doing so? By presenting their own bodies as a living sacrifice to the living God through Christ. And remember that we read before that the spiritual sacrifices are going up to the Father only through Christ that is blessing and uh, cleansing them. And I'm reading it once more that you are a, whole, a royal priesthood so that you may intercede for the people only through Christ and provide spiritual sacrifices because only Christ can sanctify a sacrifice he is making that sacrifice acceptable to God and the second spiritual sacrifice is for our own bodies to be presenting as such and that will be an acceptable sacrifice to God But it's not just that. The word of the Lord also says that let us come out of the army camp bearing the affliction that he uh, had. And this is a, g a great mystery that we are not holy only in the church, but we are also holy 24-7 in every detail of our lives. We are the light of this world so that the people can see the light and see our good deeds and praise God and glorify God. The next sacrifice is that through Christ bring sacrifices uh, that are worthy to God and that is a testimony of God. This is also a great uh, sacrifice as the word of the Lord says to the church of uh, Philippians because you have kept my word, Philadelphia rather, because you have kept my word, I have placed in front of you an open door that no one can shut, and that is in Revelations. When therefore you are providing, a, bringing forward a sacrifice of um, uh, lips that are testifying the name of the Lord, 
that means that you're keeping his commandment and that you are not rejecting or disrespecting the word of the Lord and the Lord because you have weak you are weak and you don't have much power he's giving you fruit remember to always give to your brothers because these are acceptable also acceptable prayers uh, sacrifices good deeds therefore Apostle Paul actually in his letter to Titus as he is speaking about the good deeds that a Christian must be known for he reaches to an end as he continues on as he finishes off his letter saying that they also need our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good this is in the last chapter of Titus and verse 14 and it says to devote themselves to doing what is good not whatever they want to but what actually is good in order that may provide for the daily necessities and not live unproductive lives they're going to have fruit therefore but also there's also another sacrifice that is also very interesting under one circumstance circumcision se circumstance rather that this person is tested by God give the, your tents give what is owing to God and I will open up the floodgates of heaven and I will pour down for my blessing so that there's no place for you to hold them and God is very pleased for you to be able to give from what you have received not for you to only give for what you have in uh, your storage places but for you to also give from what you do not have remember the widow that only gave the least that she had and God actually blessed her because he, she, God says that he, Christ said that she gave from all she had and there were rich people that were giving much more but they were giving part of what they had therefore God is looking at what you give God says that what you want to give there's no tenth and what you are able to what you can and what you are able but no that if you give what you can and what you are able to with joy then you're going to receive and you're going to be rejoicing in the presence and the love of God and at the end the acceptable sacrifices is for you to be a servant of God and your brothers as the word of the Lord says to the Corinthians Apostle Paul says it that let all people see us in that way as servants of God and God has made us stewards of his mysteries therefore God reveals his mysteries to the ones that are serving Christ as long as this is done with faith to the truth and with love to the serving but at the end of all things lastly the last sacrifice as the word of the Lord describes it is for us to serve one another and I'm reading that each and every one of us uh, that is from uh, the letter of Peter the first one that each and every one of us from the talent that he has received he needs to use it for the serving of his brothers and then the Lord is gonna make you worthy stewards of his multifashion uh, grace many good promises by God and God is revealing to his priests and I repeat that priests are the ones that have their hearts full of love because that love is poured out by God as that priest is being baptized in the Spirit and the result is that the love is actifying uh, that person's faith and that love is actifying that person's faith and that faith will make that person to able to serve his brothers presenting spiritual sacrifice to the Lord that is why we are we can't be able to be we are able to be chosen people royal priesthood if we have the characteristics we read about and for a king that is truth and walking according to the word of the Lord priests of the Lord if we have love 
and we serve our brothers in Christ and then we are also a holy nation we are aliens and strangers because we are not of this earth but rather of eternal life we are strangers in the world just for a little bit and we are the people that God has taken for himself so that we may declare his name saying that God is love and he has loved us with eternal love he is the one who has invited us from the darkness of this world to his magnificent light as we were never the people of God but we were people that were that was worshiping idols statues false gods sun and the moon maybe and anything else that a person can imagine we were not we have not received mercy but now we have received the mercy of the Lord by grace because we were not worthy let it let there be mercy and exaltation to the name of the Lord because we have hope and that hope is safe and secure so that we may be able to receive the promises of God as God says that I promised to myself as a blessing God I will bless you and as a multiplying God I will multiply you as the stars of the sky and the sand of the sea and I will make you my nation a nation that is chosen a blessed nation as he had uh, promised to the Israelites saying to them that they are the chosen people as long as we obey to his voice and we keep his testament blessed be the name of the Lord because we are blessed and we are being revealed through the word of the Lord the assurance that the Lord is able to transform us and transformed us rather from the people of idols to the people of his choice from uh, once you had not been you had not received mercy but now you have received mercy by the grace of the Lord I mean <laughs>